How's that? That better? Can you hear that all right? I think I might have accidentally had it on mute. Hey, John Klopp. Happy eating, chasing guns. Guys, appreciate all of y'all coming through here and hanging out with us. And thank you very much for suffering through the whole, you know, getting this thing up and going. This is my first run at doing this kind of for real with uh, Streamlabs. So I'm learning all of this stuff and figuring it out. And I, I guess I had it on mute. <laughs> I figured it'd probably be a better live stream if I did it muted. Because if you didn't have to listen to me, you might want to hang around a little longer. <laughs> Lingcod fishing. That is awesome, man. I, I want to try that. That's up, that's high up on my list of things that I want to catch is lingcod. Detecting for life. How's it going, my friend? Good to see you, sir. Very much appreciate having you here today. All of you guys. I want to thank all of you. Uh, I can't thank all of you guys uh, individually. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough. Of course, if you guys don't know, we did cross the 1,000 subscriber milestone a couple days ago totally freaking thrilled about that one that opens up all kinds of new opportunities you know the feeling when you hit a milestone like that it's just can't thank you enough every single one of you guys i cannot thank you enough fishing and stuff how are you doing there man absolute pleasure to see you sir one of my all-time favorite channels right there guys this guy does uh how to's and uh diy's on stuff that i couldn't even think about doing the jellyfish. What's up, Andrew Fishman? Good to see you, sir. So here's the deal with the jellyfish. Uh, we went out last weekend. Uh, I, I went out in case y'all guys missed it. We uh, community tab. I know, right? Community tab. Teespring. All kinds of stuff. Um, money. <laughs> the big time pennies. <laughs> yeah. So here's the deal with the jellyfish. We went out last weekend. We did a trip with uh, Triple Tail TV and uh, A and J Outdoors. Man, I didn't see any jellyfish. Uh, I, there weren't any out there, and that's not uncommon for this time of year. Unfortunately, our timing is a little bit poor on having hit this milestone. I need a couple of weeks to get one. The cabbage heads will be coming through here shortly. As I promise you, the second I can find one, the second I can get one, and they'll be coming through, the second that happens, I will keep everybody abridged. We are going to make this happen. I will not drop the ball. Convenient, I know, right? I know, I totally hear you on that. I've been kind of worried about that for the last week, looking for them and stuff like that. I should, like in the future when we do stuff like this, I think what I'm going to do, like a little, little YouTube trick, I'm going to have whatever it is we're going to do, I'm going to have that all pre-filmed and I will release it when we cross a milestone or something. But I'm not going to really push milestones anymore. I don't care. We hit the 1,000 subscribers. That opens up the opportunities that we needed with the community tab and everything else. That's the main thing I was kind of gunning for. Um, I really don't care too much about other milestones. I don't care about soaking up as many subs as possible. Um, you know, now it, it's about views and it's about watch time and retention and stuff. So, <laughs> Guero Culero, <laughs> thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And tell me I didn't pronounce that right. <laughs> I love that name. Hey, we're here making dinner, got you on TV, but don't know how to comment. No worries, man. No worries. Appreciate having you here, sir. Guys, um, if you're watching this in replay, I have a card right up. I believe it's going to be right about there. It'll take you over. Check out A&J Outdoors, Triple Tail TV. We did a collaboration with those guys over the weekend. Had an absolute blast. Uh, it was just fun. Like We didn't even have a purpose for what we were doing. We were just getting together, have some fun, and we accomplished that. So you guys want to check them out. Uh, like I said... Uh, in the playback, it's going to be uh, in that card that's going to be up at the top of the screen. If it's not in the playback, you got John A and J Outdoors in the chat thing right up there somewhere. I guess if your chat's down below, hit him up. Really cool channel. I'm I'm, pr I'm saying all that, but I'm sure most of you guys are already subscribed to him because that dude's awesome. Uh, that dude is tons and tons of awesome. The time difference, yeah, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I hear you on that one, man. Miss Joy Stewart, absolute pleasure having you here, ma'am. Thank you very much for joining us. It is always a pleasure having you here, ma'am. Yeah, uh, oh, okay, no, never mind, sorry. Happy eating. I thought you were talking to me for a second, saying you were missing me, and I was like, oh, man, I, I really appreciate that. But then I see you're talking to my, my family garden, and uh, love that guy, too, so I totally understand. <laughs> So, uh, uh, let's see, congratulations on a thousand you deserve it, brother. Thank you. I, I don't believe in deserving anything. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, deserving, 
I don't know about any of that. Uh, I, I've seen I've seen some really terrible channels with like tons of subscribers, and I've seen uh, particularly in this community a whole lot of really good channels that don't have that many subscribers. So I don't really I don't I don't personally you know subscribe to the idea of deserving anything. But thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Very professional, and I can tell you out of the work and study into it, it shows in your videos. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because, yeah, I put a lot of time into this. Um, we studied YouTube for like a year and a half before I made a single video. So, thank you for that. I That comment means all, everything to me. <laughs> so, okay, I need just a second. I'm going to finish setting some things up here, and I apologize, guys. I'm still kind of figuring out... How in the world I'm supposed to accomplish all of this stuff on a good live stream? YouTube doesn't make it very easy to set your stuff up. You know, like prior, like you can do the tags and description and all that stuff, but you can't really get yourself all set up with a, a secondary like screen and your dashboard and all of that stuff very well. Don't sell yourself short, man. You have a fantastic channel and most definitely deserve it, dude. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. I hate that word, deserve. Um, earned. I'd like to think that we earned it, you know. Deserve. Thank you. <laughs> Not fond of that word, but thank you. How you doing there, Wayne? Good to see you, man. Loved that video you had with the Dorado earlier, dude. That was cool stuff. Absolute pleasure having you here, man. We are going to be trying to get offshore. I haven't got Dorado uh, Mahi in a long time, man. We used to get little chicken dolphin all the time offshore. And now, man, it's, it's been years since I've actually caught one. I think it's probably been three or four years since I've caught a Dorado. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm not the biggest fan of eating them. Like, I'll eat them. They're good. I just prefer a lot of other stuff out there. I prefer snapper, prefer ling grouper, obviously, or amberjack, if you can get into that. Um, what are some... I like spadefish better than I like mahi, actually. Strange to say, I know. Uh, but, man, they're fun to fight in. One of my most favorite things in the entire world to do is to get into a big school of chicken dolphin around a weed line offshore. That is just fun. You know what I mean? You just got out. You just get out there with a couple of spec, reg, spec rigs, and you just start hauling into them. Ah, that's one of my favorite things. It's like Spanish mackerel, except you get better meat out of Dorado than you do Spanish mackerel. So it kind of feels like you're accomplishing more when you're doing it. Hard work pays off. <sighs> Ain't that the true? Yeah, <laughs> it does. Great content. Mr. Bishop, thank you very much, sir. I do appreciate that, and I appreciate having you here with us tonight, man. Miss Shannon Naylor, it is an absolute pleasure having you here tonight, ma'am. I want you to know... I realize it has been a very long time now. I owe you a, a eating bait video. I, I'm sorry that I dropped the ball on that. I'm dropping the ball on doing um, the video for uh, saltwater hooked, uh, saltwater hooked as well. Um, his, I have the excuse of like I want to make sure that I do it right because I don't, really don't want to make myself look stupid doing it. I don't mind making myself look stupid for yours. I just flat out dropped the ball on that. I'm sorry. And also for the, those guys, last time we had a giveaway with a bunch of stuff from LNF Distributors. I haven't mailed that out yet. I am sorry, guys. I've got it sitting right in front of me. It's been a strangely heinous couple of uh, weeks at work with just weird things going on that have just been keeping me up on weird, weird schedules. Like, you know, I had like a 30-hour day the other day, that kind of thing. It was just excuses is what it is. It's excuses, and I'm sorry about that. I've got the envelopes. I've got everybody's stuff sitting right here. I promise I will get that mailed out. Shannon, I will get your video. I will get caught up on all of this. Eating the jellyfish, it will not be plenty. It will not. I owe you an eating terrible bait video, and I promise I will come through on that. And I realize that because of the amount of time that has transpired between uh, when I was supposed to do that video and when it actually gets done, I'm going to have to up the ante just a little bit for you. I promise you I'm going to do that as well. We're going to make it a little bit better than just eating some stuff out of the freezer. To know, man, nothing better than fighting a 13-pound ling cod. Anything larger, I throw back. I hear you on that. Um, I, I got to say, though, a 100-pound uh, you know, shark, it's kind of fun. <laughs> I, I desperately want to get into the, some good ling cod like that. 
but I'm, I'm a, I am a fan of of good eating sized sharks. The five to six foot range. They're fun to fight and they're good on the uh, good on the grill. Fun, yes, sir. Yeah, it is. Lots of great people in here tonight, Mr. Uh, Anj Outdoors. You are absolutely right about that, sir. We have the best community on YouTube. Period, bar none, guys. Um, Everybody says it. Check each other out and all that fun stuff. I'm not the biggest proponent. In fact, you're going to hear me talk out about this a little bit more now that we uh, have hit our milestone and everything. But uh, I'm not the biggest fan of, of just everybody subscribing to everybody and doing the whole leave a comment, subscribe, and then leave a like. And that not no. You can be you hit up people in the chat, say hi, build relationships, uh, be a good member of the community, and yeah. Work with each other, help each other out. If you are not fond of somebody's videos, don't ruin the YouTube experience for yourself by just doing it to do it. You don't have to falsely inflate your subscriber numbers just to get them. We, we all want to get to that 1,000 subscriber mark, so I understand networking and working with each other. Do it, man. But there doesn't need to be an expectation that everybody has to subscribe to everybody. That having been said, like I said a moment ago, we have the best community on YouTube, and that is no joke. I mean, literally, you want to, you have a community of guys who help people do YouTube. That's a pretty strong community out there. If you're not familiar with them, they got a strong one. And then we have this fishing community, this outdoor community that we have grown. You can't go to Pusa Studios or uh, D. Nimmin Livestream or you know, any one of a number of these channels that do this sort of thing and not see somebody from our community hanging out in those live streams. We are invasive. We are taking over. This is an awesome community. So, you know, stick with each other, network, work with each other. We're going places and we're all going places together. Well, I won't argue then. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I guarantee right now I'm like so behind in the chat. <laughs> Tag Shannon, you it. <laughs> uh, I will be catching up, but I want to get through a couple of these. Hey, what's up, Grant? Good to see you, sir. Very much appreciate having you here, man. You guys want to talk about fantastic members of the community? Mr. Grant McIntosh is a leader in the community, period, bar none. Say hello to that gentleman. You want to get in good with him. You're right, we don't want to feel like we deserve it, but like you said, some great channels can't get traction. Well, since terrible ones have way more than they should, I believe you earned that. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're right about that. But you know, it all comes down to just, like, you need to get to the thousand subscriber mark, and then after you get to that point, after you get to that point, that, that is kind of important. You need to get to that milestone. You need to get through your monetization stuff and all that. Um, but after that happens then it all comes down to one viral video. You want to get one good suggested video and that's how it's done. I've seen, I've talked to several channels about this, this specific thing, and it is, once you get past monetization, you are building up an inventory, you are building a library of videos. You want as many videos in your playlists as possible because you're gonna get that one video. That one video is gonna get hot, it's gonna be fire, and it might be five years down the road. But when that one video hits, those people that are funneling in through that one video are going to watch your entire library. That is, if you're looking to make money, if you're looking to explode, that's how it happens. It's that one video that you make, but you need to be, you, you want to be, um, I guess you don't need to be monetized before because that'll get you monetized, but you do want to have that library. You don't want to get, uh, you don't want to hit a home run out of the park on your first at bat because people are going to watch that video they're going to check you out, see that you have no other videos, and there's not going to be anything to watch. They're not going to be in tune with you, with your community, with uh, the things that you do. They're not going to know your backstory. They're not going to be as interested. If they watch that one video, and then they watch the other ones, and they start to learn about you, and they start to become engaged with you and your character and who you are, man, that is how you don't just get subscribers, but that's how you keep people involved in the things that you do. And that is my two cents. Miss Red Ladyfish, absolute pleasure seeing you, ma'am. Thank you very much. I apologize for the amount of time it took for me to get to you. Um, I'm putting a straight face on it, but I am totally stoked about our milestones here. Uh, the 1,000 subscriber, obviously. Mr. Matt Blackfish, I apologize. I didn't say hello to you, sir. And thank you very much for joining us. It is always a pleasure seeing you, man. 
Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I didn't want to say anything prior because I'm not trying to just get people to subscribe for any reason. But I do want to say thank you guys, uh, in particular Grant, Shannon, you guys, uh, A&J Outdoors, you guys have helped me out immensely, and I want to thank you very much. You helped me get a milestone that was a very important one to me. The the thousand subscribers, yes, you know, we've said it like a hundred times already, and I'm sorry about that. I, I am super excited about it, despite the straight face. But the, the thing that was really exciting about that to me that I didn't want to talk about was that we hit it in 364 days. We got a thousand subscribers in a year. Um, that was That's important to me because that was a milestone that I set for myself May 1st, 2018. When we posted our first fishing video, I was like, okay, let's see if we can do this. Uh, let's, we're going to we're, we're take a year and we're going to see how well we can do in a year. Now I have it under my belt that we got a thousand subscribers in a year. And that, that, that really means a lot to me, um, not because the numbers matter, none of that matters, but it, what matters to me is that we set a goal for ourselves and we reached it. Um, and, and I want to thank you guys for that. That is the real important thing to me, that I was able to set a goal and accomplish it. Shannon, Grant, a and Outdoors, a lot of you, it, I, I, I could name every single person in this chat, and about 900 other people, <laughs> you know. That, uh, that, that really played a big hand in, in allowing me to accomplish that goal. So thank you very much for that, guys. I'm, I'm really tickled about that one. I want to thank you for that. Um, that was a big deal to me. In fact, I had a sit-down talk with Rachel about it. She wanted me to back off she, for, for a lot of reasons, a lot of very good reasons. She wanted me to, to be more realistic about our approach, and I did. And we still managed to get that milestone, so thank you, guys. I agree. I would rather have a thousand real subscribers than that, than that, and watch two thousand that don't. I wholeheartedly agree. When I was playing in bands, well, one of the things that we were always talking about was you want super fans. We'd rather have, uh, you know, we'd rather have ten super fans than a hundred fans, uh, and that's that's on us as creators, on, on all of us. We want to make stuff. It's not about like, oh, I want those people just to love me. I want to make the uh, sort of content that gets people into, you know, really into our stuff. And we're working on that. We're not there yet. Uh, I think we all are kind of in that same boat. Like, uh, we are all working towards making content that people really enjoy, and we're all improving. Uh, every single person here whose videos I have watched, you go back and watch the first ones and watch the ones that are happening now, and every single time I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're getting it. We're not there yet. As a community, as a group, as individuals, we're not there yet. But man, we are getting there, and we're getting there in the right way. <laughs> people are improving very well. And that's how you get your super fans, you know? You you make content that people are going to be totally, totally into. Hook em, Dano. What's up, man? Good to see you, sir. Nicholas Pouillet, sir. Absolute pleasure having you here, sir. I, I have to take a moment, Nicholas Pouillet, and tell you, um, first off, that I know I'm butchering your name. I'm sorry about that. But, dude, I want to see more rants from you, man. That I, I haven't forgotten. One of the best videos of 2018 is the rant that you did about Jag Fishing's channel, about the, uh, the shout-outs videos. Dude, that was hilarious. Like, literally, one of the best videos I have seen in 2018 or t early 2019, whenever it was that you posted that. You need to do more of those, man. That was good stuff. Pick Pick fishing topics, whatever it is. I don't care. Pick other YouTube channels. You may practice with our channel. Feel free. You can destroy our channel with a, a hearty rant. And I will support it. I will like it. And uh, if you're worried about uh, negative comments on there, I will leave a positive comment simply because I told you to do it. I want to see more of that, man. I love that rant. Oh, dude, I did eggplants once. I loved them. Eggplants are cool. We got a good little gar garden going ourselves right now. Um, cucumbers, tomatoes, squash, cilantro. Got to have cilantro. That's one of Rachel's favorites. And I'm going to try potatoes, but I haven't done it yet. Now I'm getting back there and I'm reading things like, Truth, brother, and I have no idea if Anjay is talking about me or something somebody else said. Sorry. My wife's channel hit monetization in exactly five months of channel launch. That's cool. See, that's the kind of thing... 
Like, like I, I really don't care about the time frame. I don't care that we did it in a year. I'm not trying to say that I'm better than anybody else. It's nothing like that. It was simply a thing of like, I set that goal for myself and, and, and we did it. We accomplished it. Had I set a goal for two years, you know, and then hit it, then, then cool. Same kind of deal. Because I know, I know people, Cole did a fantastic job. He smashed it real fast. Uh, and I'm not trying to compare it to anybody else. I'm just, that's the goal that I set, and we hit it, and I'm super excited that we were able to do that. I had more hits on one vid where I got bit by a gar. That's a way to get some, some, some views right there, get bit by something. Kind of lame video compared to most of my other vids. Man... Uh, okay, so first off, and, and one of those uh, important things to know about YouTube, period, is that 90% of your views are going to come from less than 10% of your videos. You're just going to have bangers. You're going to have those videos that explode. Strangely, our very first video exploded. Uh, that's where we got a lot of our traffic from, was our very first video. Uh, I have yet to been able to accomplish beating it or even coming close to matching it. The second best video on our channel, I didn't catch a fish. I didn't catch a single fish that day. I just wandered around. I played with uh, fishing and stuff here, had uh, done a video on, uh, on a magic arm mount that you can use. I got it right here. One of these guys. You can mount it onto, uh, you can clamp that thing down onto like uh, anything. And so I clamped it down to the outside of the truck, put my camera on the outside of the truck, and I did some little spin outs and stuff like that in the sand and then I edited in some sound effects of tires squealing. Just I kinda had some fun with it. But I did not catch a single fish and that thing is the second best video on our channel. You never know. You never know what's gonna be that thing. Yeah, but they get hungry eventually. My son is a gamer at 15. Watch a channel where they made a dish. Now he thinks he's a chef. <laughs> hey dude, that's how my channel started. I made a video about fishing. Uh, and I was like, oh, you know what? I can fish. <laughs> That's how we all do. I'm an authority now. I'm on YouTube. I've actually told people that. I know what I'm talking about because I'm a YouTuber. That pisses people off sometimes. People who are good at fishing. People who are better than me at fishing. If I want to get under their skin, that's how I do it. I tell them, oh, I'm the authority. I'm the one on YouTube making videos about it. <laughs> I'll straight up tell them you know more than me, but I'm the authority. <laughs> and I say that tongue-in-cheek laughing, of course. Hey, thanks, Nick. I appreciate that, man. Mr. Pouye, I very much appreciate that. You're right. I've learned myself that quality trumps quantity. Absolutely right. Content is king. I listen to everyone say you have to post once a week. I found that I would rather post every eight or nine days and have quality, and I totally agree with you on that one. Um, uh, I have a lot to say on that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna drag everybody through my comments on that. But I, I totally agree. There is value in posting once a week. Um, YouTube views your videos differently if you're constantly producing videos. So do a live stream once a week. If that's something you're concerned about. Uh, I'm not either. As you guys can see, I have gone two weeks without doing a live stream. And I just randomly take weeks off where I don't post videos. Because we do a fishing channel. And I can't always be fishing. I live an hour from the coast at that. So, yeah, I can't always have videos. They're not always good days to be able to go out there and do it. I'm not going to sweat about it. I'm, I'm not going to stress, especially now. Uh, we're going to make the videos of the experiences that we enjoy. And we're going to try to make those videos as interesting for you as possible. I'm going to keep trying to get better and better at it. But I'm not going to stress about the, uh, the sticking to a schedule and st and. and I'm not going to revolve my life around making sure if I, if I if I make it stressful and I bring myself down, if I bring my wife down, if I'm making life hard on everybody so that I can accomplish a uh, you know, I don't have any videos and I got to get something posted, so we have to get out and do something, so we have to put something else on the back burner. That's not going to be a very fun video if I'm dragging my family through that, if I'm dragging myself through that. So I agree with you, man. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try but I'm not going to sweat when it doesn't happen. <laughs> and I think eight or, every eight or nine days, I think you're totally fine on that because the, the YouTube thing goes, it's like if you do something multiple times daily, you kind of fall into a category. If you do some things, if you do videos daily, you're in a different category. If you do things every once every 72 hours, you're in a different category. Once every seven days is a category. And then I think once every 21 days is also a category. 
but you look at people like Dude Perfect, if you're not familiar with them, they post like a video a month and they're some of the absolute best videos on YouTube. And so they can manage to pull that off. So all you got to, the key is making good videos. Everything else can come with good videos. Yeah, don't just post to post. I do stuff like that sometimes because I do have a thing. You know, like I'll do those videos where it's like I get those Amazon codes and I don't want to do those not even once a month. But every now and then I get some good ones and I'm like, man, somebody might find some value and 90% of the people are going to think I'm stupid for posting this video, but maybe it helps somebody and I do get a quick and easy video out on a week where maybe I don't have something, so I'll do that. But that's about where I draw the line, if I can provide value. If I can't provide value, it's a, it's, it's a shot week. Start over. It's not going to hurt anything to take a week off and then come back the next week. If, if you're really worried about it, too, batch, video, batch your videos. Film a video, you know, take a weekend, film three or four videos, get them all edited, and then you've got three or four weeks worth of content. That's the way to tackle that problem. Nothing cooler than playing in a different state and fans are singing along. Oh, yeah, happy. <laughs> I hadn't done that, but with the previous band that I was with, we played South by Southwest, and we were in front of a crowd of about 50 people, but we were on top of a building looking down on 7,000 people. <laughs> cool experience. <laughs> hear you on that one. Always be improving. That's absolutely right. Always be improving. Mr. Ian Reiser, can I ask, are you new to the channel? I had not seen your name before, and I actually don't have many people following me from the Corpus area. And as you can tell, I'm a little bit behind in chat, so sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to get caught up. It did. We'll gain 70 new people. See, Nick, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I'm like super behind, so let me catch up here. Oh, I'm not that far behind. Okay. That's what I'm telling you, Nick. You Once a month. I, I, I want a once a month rant from Nicholas Poulier. Anybody out, anybody in here, I want to know what your thoughts are on this, guys. Let me know. Let me know. Did you see his rant on jag fishing? If you didn't, shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. If you did see it, let me know. What did you think about that rant? What do you think about me like telling this dude he needs it? I want to do rant videos. I want to sit there and complain about something. I can't do it as good as he did, so that's why I haven't done any. There's my two cents on that. There's my rant. I want more Nicholas Poulier rants. Glad I caught your stream. Dinner time with the fam. Sir, God bless. Very much appreciate you. Thank you for coming out and joining us, man. I look forward to seeing you next time. I look forward to seeing your next one too, man. Put a girl in a bikini for a thumbnail and you get a ton of views. Not that I did or would do that. Um... Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. There have been some suspect shots in our videos and some thumbnails uh, where I utilized uh, my very beautiful wife <laughs> in ways that are kind of uh, on the outskirts of inappropriate for that exact reason. Um, she did not get the views that I was expecting her to get and we are going to have a talk about that behind the scenes when nobody, you know, we're going to have a, a meeting a YouTube channel meeting where we have a sit down and be like, okay, this is what we did, Rachel, and this is what we need from you. And I, I need you to step up your game on the bikini thumbnails. <laughs> if she's watching this, she's going to be so pissed at me right now. <laughs> she's driving back from work. I don't know if she can watch it. The Jag video got 329 views, 108 likes. I need to rant more. That's what I'm saying, man. That is a thing. You have a thing with that. You need to get angry more often, man. It doesn't have to be angry. I just want to see you just just picking random things, you know? My best viewed video was a pistol shootout, and the trolls showed up. Can't tell you how many comments I did. Oh, that sucks. Dude, chasing guns, I've seen that happen, man. And there's just, like, nothing you can do about it. They have a plan for every everything that you could do. God, that sucks to hear that, man. Do it again, though. Pistol shootout. I like that. I like the sound of that. You guys see Darren's new video where he was like shooting them targets and he had he had his nephew out there shooting with him and he put the GoPro on the next to the targets. As soon as I saw them targets start popping, I was like, God, dude's got he's got some cajones doing that, taking shots next to a GoPro. I want to do that next. <laughs> the cajones on that guy. Can you say that on YouTube? I don't know. I've been subbed for a long time, but first time watching the stream. Hey, man, well, I appreciate you dropping by and saying hi, dude. Um, 
Yeah, we're still trying to get a uh, get in the live stream thing. I, I don't know if you, you uh, yeah, I don't know if you caught the beginning of this or not. I assume you didn't. We had some rough patches trying to get the thing started. Uh, this YouTube kind of threw us for a loop a little bit with the thousand subscriber milestone. I, I do everything with a cell phone. This entire channel, whole thing. So we got a lot of uh, walls and hoops that we got to jump through in order to accomplish the things that we do. Live streaming being one of them. Now, the, the, the thousand subscriber thing didn't shut me down on live streams, but I'm using uh, new software on my cell phone to do it, and I'm learning that stuff. It's it's all new. I, I don't know. I don't know the first thing about this. I do have some cool things though. Um, little things that'll pop up on the screen in the event somebody like subscribes and stuff like that. I think that stuff is set up on here. I tried. Mr. Matt Blackfish, thank you very much for joining us, sir. I very much appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful night, man. Still haven't received the giveaway package, Nicholas Poulier Outdoors. There you go, Nick. Jump on him. I want to see a rant. I want to see you tune out Grant. <laughs> well, Grant, I, that's, that's just what I see in my head. My wife would slap me. My wife will slap me. I'm sure she's going to. Grant, I received nothing. Oh, Grant, are you calling out Nick when you didn't send anything to A&J? <laughs> Darren's underwater footage. Yeah, I agree with that. I like his surfing footage, too. Uh, uh, Darren's just got good footage, period. Uh, I love what that dude. And he's got good personality, too. I like him. Man, A&J, I am... Uh, I'm drinking vitamin C water, uh, like water with vitamin C packets poured in it. I'm sick. I've been sick for three days. This is my third day of it, and I'm feeling better, but I'm still under the weather, under the weather. so I'm, I'm pumping up on the vitamin C. I'm referring to the giveaways that Nick and I had the most entries in, and he won. Dude, you got your whole bass camo thing. Get out of here with that. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Nick. He won the bass camo thing. He got all that basket. Jump on him, man. I want to see a rant. I want to see you rant about Grant. I want to see a Grant rant. <laughs> what did the five fingers say in the face? <laughs> there she is. There's my baby doll. We have to have a talk. Um, as soon as you get home, ma'am, we need to have a discussion about bikini thumbnails. Um, the good news is we're going to get you some more bikinis. <laughs> There's no bad news. I'm not going any farther with that. <laughs> Looks like lemonade. It kind of tastes... Yeah, it doesn't even taste like lemonade. It tastes like crap. Waiting for you, Rachel. I have dinner made for you, ma'am. I have a uh, chicken Caesar salad. Uh, big one sitting in there ready to go. Uh, because I saw myself on video the other day and I look really fat. So we're going to do something about me losing some weight. We can, talk, uh, we can have our discussion about your uh, bikini thumbnails. And the other side of that conversation can be about me having to lose some weight. It's not? Was that not good? I thought that, Shannon, I thought that was, I thought that was pretty good. No? What did I, where did I go wrong with that? I thought that was like husband A plus. Am I wrong? Mmm. <laughs> mmm. 10,000 milligrams of vitamin C. Hoy. So in case you guys missed it, we did a collaboration. A&J Outdoors and I and Triple TV, Triple Tail TV all jumped out to the Packery Channel Jetty the other day. You guys, dude, uh, first off, like I've said before, we have a lot of really cool uh, members of this community. Man, if you're anywhere near any of these guys, get together and do that. Because that was fun. That was so much fun hanging out with those guys. I feel bad in hindsight because like when we first got out to the jetty, at least I felt this way and I kind of felt like everyone else felt this way. But we were like, you know, getting to know each other. Like I walked out on the jetty and I kind of had this thought of like having some fun with it. Like, oh, I'm going to go find... I thought I thought Triple Tail was out there with, with uh, A&J. Triple Tail wasn't there yet. So I'm walking out on the rocks and I'm like, man, I'm going to sneak up on them and I'm going to be like, hey, you're that guy from that channel that I watch. You know, ha, 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 ha. And I walk out there, and Triple Tail wasn't there yet. And I, I see uh, I see John, but he's got his baklava on and his hat and glasses. I, I can't really tell that it's him, but he's got a, he, he's got his GoPro on him. I was like, oh, I bet you money that's him. And I was standing, like, right behind him. I was like, uh, hey, are you John? 
He's like, yeah, who are you? I was like, oh, uh, I'm Stanley. So then we spent like the next two hours just kind of like, like everybody was just kind of feeling each other out. Like nobody, like I think we were all kind of watching our mouths. You didn't want to say something that was offensive or sounded stupid or, you know, anything like that. <laughs> so we were all fishing in the same spot. And for like that first little bit of time, it's like we were all just kind of not, not, you know, didn't know what to say. Not sure. <laughs> After that, it was an absolute blast. But, dude, it, it was funny. I wish we had that on video. Just for that short amount of time, that little bit of awkwardness. I think that would have made for a good video right there. We were all trying so hard to not be that way. Yeah, maybe it was just me. It might have been just me because yeah, social anxiety and stuff like that. John made it real easy. Like, I didn't have that much of an issue. But uh, but I still felt a little bit of that. And I was trying. I was trying to, you know, be social. But, again, I was like... Oh, can we cuss in front of each other? Like, you don't do that on YouTube. But can we do that when the camera's not on? Is your camera on? We're, we're not really catching any fish right now. Do I look stupid for not catching fish? Am I doing this right? Is he doing something different? Well, he's not catching fish either. You know, it was just a lot of stuff going through my head, at least. But it was all so fun. I got a mug like that at the Dollar Tree. Love yeah, yeah, that's. I think that's where I got mine. I was gonna, I do glass etching poorly, uh, or I have some glass etching stuff, and I was gonna make some like mugs for the band, and I never made it. So I've got the glasses, and I got the glass etching solution, but I never made Hey, maybe I should make some, uh, I don't have a brand. I don't wanna just paint my name on some glasses. I think that's dumb. I don't like using my name as a brand. You're gonna lose weight about as much as Rachel weighs it. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't, I don't, I can't see her, she, I, with the wonderful things that I have said, I don't see her leaving me. <laughs> hey, Mr. Isabella, good to see you, sir, appreciate you coming and dropping by, man. Had to edit my belly out of my last video. <laughs> Joe Grant, dude, I do that, I do that. Oh, and, and the belly, and like when I, Go like that right there, those guys. I got a weird chin as it is. So those guys, I, I edit that stuff out. Yeah, embarrassing. Mr. Big Time 1K, what's up, Northwest Open Season? Appreciate you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Man, yeah, 1K is big time. <laughs> Although everybody's getting that these days, but thank you anyway. <laughs> and yeah, I'm putting a straight face on it. I'm totally I'm, I'm stoked about it. You meet Cooper or Jeff yet? Uh, oh man, for dude, Mr. Riser, dude, for a second there, uh, I, I had this old manager. His name was Jeff Cooper, and I thought for a second you were talking about him because I'd love to get in touch with that guy again. He was really awesome, and I've lost touch with him over the years. So for a second, I was thinking you were talking about him. I have, I have run into Coop. Uh, I've not talked to him. We've. We've fished in the same locations together. Um, he, we are both antisocial. And I didn't want to be that guy doing that to him. And I was shy. So, yeah, I haven't I haven't done anything with those guys. I, I've been out there with them. I actually ran into him, Or I didn't run into him, but we were at uh, uh, Port A Outfitters together one day. And then we both went to the jetty. And we both fished different spots on the jetty and I just kind of let him have his space I think at the time I had like 200 subscribers and so I you know it was one of those things where it was like I didn't have enough of a channel to warrant that's kind of stupid to say that at least that was my thought at the time I felt like I didn't have enough to warrant talking to him uh, I did invite him out camping once and he didn't respond to me <laughs> so yeah uh, uh, I have I, I see him out there we fish a lot of the same spots. I have not gone up and said hi to him yet. I will. At some point, I'll see him. I, I've seen him several times. Pretty good. Packing stuff up, headed to the mountains tomorrow for some trophy trout. Dude, that sounds so awesome. That sounds so cool. I want to get into trout up there so bad. Uh, uh, my wife has family in Wisconsin, and I'm making it a goal to get to Wisconsin and go do some fishing with my brother-in-law up there. Had to edit my belly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I'm so care like, oh, yeah. I, I We put a tripod out when I'm fishing so that I can get myself in frame. And I make sure that whenever I'm in frame, like, I suck it up and I get the... 
you know, I, I straighten out the back, and I've got a hernia, so I, I make sure the hernia gets pushed in, and <laughs> it's ridiculous. Pretty excited. Only done it once several years ago. Got skunked. That sucks. This time we have an expert going, taking better gear. Also taking Kokani gear as a backup. Is it Kokani? Kokani? That's really cool. I'm not familiar with what that is, but it sounds awesome. And good luck to you, man. I want to see you catch some of them trout, dude. God, I love trout. Mm -hmm. Why are you on camera with no pants on? Get some pants on. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi. Mr. Poulier, thank you very much for joining us, man. Always a pleasure. I'm looking forward to seeing that rant, sir. You have a wonderful night. <laughs> Landlocked sockeye salmon. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Oh, man, I love salmon. That's another one. I want salmon. I want salmon so bad. Yeah. Miss OG Cherie, thank you very much for joining us, man. We appreciate having you here with us tonight. Is this your first time hanging out with us? It might not be. It might not be. Um, I've seen your name before. I don't remember where I've seen it, though. I don't know if it was in here or, like, on somebody else's uh, live stream or something. What are you doing? You being all camera shy or what? I hey, what did we catch when we were out fishing? Yeah, you can have a smarty. What did we catch when we were out fishing last weekend? Stingray. No, we didn't. A&J Outdoors caught a stingray. We caught whiting. She's yeah. being all shy now. Second time here. Ma'am, thank you very much for coming back. You know, it's one thing to stop in and say hi the first time. It'd be like, oh, uh, this guy is awful. I don't ever want to see this again. Yeah. But coming back for a second go, thank you. <laughs> that means I'm not too terrible. <laughs> Very much appreciate having you here, ma'am. What are you drinking? Uh, it's vitamin C water because I'm sick. Not like vitamin C water, but vitamin and the letter C in water. Not so much for the uh, monitor over here. Alrighty then. And to you, ma'am. Same to you. What's everybody saying? Every, everyone. Blessings, everyone. Blessings, everyone. I got some, while well, we got just a second here, like a little bit of a... I'm playing with a couple of features on here I'm kind of curious about. Whether they like you or come back for the train wreck, it's still viewed. <laughs> I agree, dude. <laughs> they Daddy's come back for the train wreck. That is going to be wreck it Ralph for Halloween. Stanley, we can see your shoes in the window. Ah, uh, thank you, ma'am. You go get some pants on. <laughs> can You can't see me not wearing pants, can you? First thing I do when I get home from work, pants come off. We don't do pants here. Now. I got overlays on here and I don't know how to use them. Thank you, by the way, Shannon. Thank you for that. Very much appreciate it. Obviously a concern these days. Man, I've got like these cool like overlays and stuff on here and I, just, I don't even know how to use them. What are pants? I don't know. <laughs> I don't do them. I bear, man, the first thing I do when I get home, I kick off the shoes. I go everywhere barefoot. One of the things I loved, like I used to live in Corpus Christi, man, and I went everywhere barefoot. H-E-B, Walmart, didn't care. <laughs> didn't matter. L-O-L. <laughs> Looks like a be beautiful day there. It is. What do you think? Is it a beautiful day? Where are you from, OG Cherie? We are in South Texas here. Um, I think we are... It's getting a little warm. We're about 85 degrees today and sunny, and it's a little bit windy outside. A little bit too windy to be out fishing. In Southern California? What are you talking about? It looks beautiful here. You're in Southern California. You get to live in, like, perpetual beauty there. Very low standards in CC. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I like it, but yeah. Oh, wait, no, I guess you didn't mean that, like, in a bad kind of way. 
I kind of took it, sorry, I took it as a bad kind of way. But yeah, the standards are, uh, they don't really care too much. What's up? Hey, Jay, good to see you back, sir. I've always heard Texas was a pants optional state. You're absolutely right about that. I've always heard Texas was a pants optional state. I'm that all outdoors. That means that uh, we're not really required to wear pants here. Yeah, like people wear shorts to church. And it's kind of like it's frowned upon, you know? Like people look at you when you're in shorts and they're like, uh... Bad choice, dude. Bad choice, dude. But at the same time, it's like 100 degrees outside, so nobody's going to say a word about it. Actually, the church out on the island is an open-air church out there. It's uh, like a big patio. That's all people wear, shorts. Love that place. Hadn't been in a while, though. But yeah, everywhere else. Open season. I always heard Texas was in place. You already read that one. <laughs> Why are you leaning on me like that? Hmm. kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> Why don't hey hold on a second? You, you go get changed. Go get in pajamas or something. Get out of your uniform. I want to be ready to wear it for lyric. That is that ain't lyric clothes. I'm gonna go get it. I don't know if we're doing that or not. I haven't talked to Mama, but I want you out of your. And hey, I want you to put all your clothes away. I don't want them just thrown on the floor. I want them put away, including anything that you dropped in the bathroom or in our bedroom, or in our bathroom, or in front of the front door, or the couch. I want it all put away. The little trail of Savannah that runs through the house, I want it picked up. Sorry. That was an important thing needed to be said. I don't like the trails. I, 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 I did. I kicked off my shoes. I understand that. But I want you to fix yours, and then I'll fix mine. I can't wait to get over this thing. I wear shorts to church. I figured Jesus wore a robe and sandals to worship, so who am I to judge? Man, preach into the choir on that one, my friend. I, I wholeheartedly agree. I live in... Man, I, I live in surf trunks. Um, I, you know, I was... I, you don't see it much more from me anymore because I'm fat and out of shape and I got a bad back, what's left of it. But uh, I live a uh, surfer, man. I went everywhere in surf trunks. So, yeah, wholeheartedly agree with you on that one. There you go. Yeah, see, it's South Texas, dude. That's what we do. Shorts to church. Yes, sir. I live in Corpus Christi, Brownsville, San Padre Island. Is that South Padre? Uh, when I was a kid. I was born in Westlaco. Oh, I spent my. I did uh, insurance work in Westlaco. Almost got myself good and murdered, so I didn't do that job for very long. <laughs> That's rad. I love all those places. I, I really want to live in South Padre. There's not much available for me as far as work, and it's so far separated from, you know, the rest of the world family that I, I can't convince Rachel to want to do it. But man, I love it down there. South Padre is just. It's one of my most favorite places in the world to go. Spectre, twenty four ninety nine. How are you doing, sir? Appreciate you coming and joining us. How was your afternoon, man? How'd it go? Uh, playing with the new Streamlabs stuff here. Seems to be working all right. Just let her be messy, Dad. You will miss the mess when she is gone. I will not miss the mess. Will not. I will miss her when she's 45 and I finally allow her to leave the nest but until that time I will not miss that mess <laughs> busy but got things done yeah I appreciate that man I know it's one of them days uh, uh, Spectre 2499 here is uh, an associate of mine at work and he is going to be doing a channel on Airsoft uh, so if you guys are interested in that I highly suggest check him and checking him out early here because we're gonna we're gonna get his channel going at some point uh, he's been working on some pretty cool stuff, though. I like his videos. And he's got a pretty cool little little niche that he's working on with the airsoft. My dad just gave me a gigging spear and a tub of gulps. That is rad. Um, have you ever been gigging for Stingray? I love doing it. Daddy, 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 guess what? What? I'm going to tell them that's No, something. no, not until you go get changed. Get out of that uniform, get into human being clothes, and pick up all your stuff. And then you can. Um, 
So we've we've done a lot of gigging for Flounder, which is a different ball game. That's more of a wintertime thing for us. Um, and I got funny stories about that. And if he's not in the room right now, at least I don't see him. But my good friend Nick um, Sinox is his name in the chat down here. I want to get that guy out for gigging Flounder on the flats uh, in Port Aransas Channel. Every time those tankers goes by, you get them flats and they get good and shallow. And you can go out there and gig the crap out of Flounder. Uh, but it's really muddy, and you're going to end up getting swamped by the wake of that boat, which is going to make for, you know, great YouTube fodder, and which is why I want him to do it and not me. <laughs> but uh, Stingray is another good one. You can do those on the beach in, like, June, July, I think, is when those guys come in really shallow. Yeah, you go out there with a lantern and a gigging spear, man. Have at it. 45, 40, what's, what's 45? What are we laughing about with 45. What is this? I don't know why that happened, guys. Ignore the mess on the floor and the table and the room. How do I switch this back? Dang it! She's getting her clothes on. That do it? There it is. Okay. Sorry, guys. What does? Well, it's 45. What are we all laughing about about 45? Yeah, Shamrock. Yeah, oh, dude, I love it over there, by the way. Hey, there's Nick right now. Speak of the devil. Did I just say... Did Savvy just say yes, sir, in an English accent? Uh, yeah, she did, because that's how I raised my daughter. <laughs> it's respect. She says, yes, sir, in an English accent. Uh, dude, I love Stingray. Stingray is one of my favorite eating guys. Dude, I take, uh, I take Stingray every chance I get. This is one of those... I know people don't fish for them. I don't know why, because they're really good eating. You get a lot of meat on them, and they're kind of an interesting fight. Like, they're not just a dead weight kind of fight. They kind of are, but they're a dead weight that's really hard to... Like, for one, you know, they suction cup to the bottom. But then once you get them off of the bottom, then they kind of fight. Derek and Stephanie Radke. Hey, how are you guys doing? Very much appreciate y'all joining us tonight. Are you guys subscribers? Is this the first time you've been here? I'm curious. I uh, don't recognize your name. And I, if, if it's not your first time, I apologize for that. It's been a, a hectic couple of weeks. And I'm going to use that as my excuse. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Slick Rick, how are you doing, sir? It's an absolute pleasure seeing you, man. How have you been? I hadn't seen you in a bit. It has been a while. Stingray, need very special attention when cooking. I don't agree. I don't agree. Because I've failed Stingray and it still wasn't bad. But if you do it, if, if you pay special attention to it, you can make them really good. You're absolutely right about that. Gonna run, need to finish packing for my trip. Yeah, absolutely. Get out of here, man. You got some outsides to go do. Go get yourself some trout. Thank you very much for joining us. I look forward to seeing that video. If you want the scallop taste, yeah, if you want to prepare them like that, that's a different ball game. You want, you want stingray taste like scallop, it can be done, but you do have to cook it right for that. Uh, personally, I don't care. We bake it. Um, red ladyfish, how do you prepare stingray? It's a couple of different ways uh, with to scallop them. To make them taste like scallops, you take the ray fin, you just, you take the meat right off the top of the ray fin. You cut back uh, behind the ears, you know, down the body, behind the ears, behind that little uh, gill, whatever that thing is behind their head. And then right down the, right down the back of the body, and then you can just fillet, their, their fin is a, uh, it's got cartilage that, that runs the all the way outside. Like, just totally the whole thing is this big thing of cartilage. And you take the meat right off the top of that fin. Just you, You'll feel it. You'll know what I'm talking about. You take your fillet knife and just cut down to the, the bone. When you get to the bone, just start filleting outwards towards the edge of that fin. And you'll get a whole slab of meat off of that. And then you can flip it over, take the skin off the top. Um... You want to make it taste like scallops, you can take the a cookie cutter and cut it in the shapes if you absolutely require it to be in those shapes. But then you put it in a, uh, uh, what are those white dish things called, Rachel? Ramekin. A ramekin? No, not a ramekin, like those things we bake stuff in. What? Those dishes we, they're like porcelain dishes, I don't know what those things are called. It's a baking dish thing, whatever. Put them in there, put some butter, a lot of butter. And a lot of butter, Parmesan cheese, whatever, you know, this uh, 
little seasoning kind of stuff. It doesn't really, you know, the seasoning that you like to put on there. No, 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 no to bake stuff. The white thing. Oh, that you, corning, corning. Yeah, like corningware. And then corningware. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Thank you. Ceramics. Um, but you put it in that baking dish, and you put a lot of butter and well, you know, a little bit of seasoning, onions and and uh, garlic go well with it too. And then you bake that for as short amount of time as you can until it's done. Uh, I would say like f 400 degrees for maybe 15, 20 minutes, depending on how thick it is. You know, the thicker Pyrex. Yeah, that's another one. Um, the, depending on how thick those fillets are, you cook it a little bit longer, but you want to cook it for as short amount of time as possible, and that keeps it good and tender, and all the onions and, and butter and everything kind of keep it moist. Um, you want to cut any bloodlines out of it because that makes it taste a little fishy. But that's all there is to it. I mean, that's how we cook like all of our fish is just that same way. Uh, the 100 pounder ray we caught offshore was so hard to get the meat off on the slip. Oh man, that was such a nightmare. We did, we caught a massive stingray and I had a big bubba blade. And I mean, this stingray took up the entire front bow of the boat. I was sitting on top of the guy, just sawing to get through that fin. It was so thick. I mean, I mean, it was it was like that thick. Uh, the the ray, if not thicker, it might have been thicker. And trying to cut through that whole thing, guy, it must have taken me thirty or forty minutes to cut those fins off. Just sawing at them. Afterwards, it wasn't too bad after that. But the problem was that yeah, we were doing it offshore too, because we couldn't fit them into the box. So we were, you know, we were bouncing around and, and trying to cut him while we're you know doing that number and that, that sucked but we got a lot of meat out of it though talk about blood everywhere yeah <laughs> the picture i look so stupid in that picture that we got of it and i'm in the shadow and there's like a lot of sun on half of it so it's it's really overexposed on part of it so the, the photo itself doesn't look very good but man there yeah we did we got blood all over the hull of that boat I always do scallops on the skillet. Actually, I haven't done it that way, but you're right. I bet that's a better way of doing it. With butter in the pan and then fry it? Pan fry it? Is it? Okay, Rachel agrees. She says that's... If you want to make them taste like uh, scallops, totally ignore everything that I said and uh, uh, pan fry it with butter for uh, as short amount of time as possible. That's a much better instruction, Red Lady Fish. Uh, Rachel and, and, and Synox here know more excuse me they know more about good cooking than than i do good call on that ever tried bluefish i've seen youtubers call it a trash fish try it and gag but i think it's one of the best tasting fishes in the area yeah um man i eat everything for starters uh i have had bluefish and no i'm not terribly fond of it but it's not bad it's not bad at all it's a little on the fishy side it's like eating a bonita um, it cut the bloodline out, and they taste just like anything else. We call them hardtails too, but uh, nothing wrong with bluefish. They're fine. Um, in fact, they're they're more offshore native uh, cousin is the uh, rainbow fish, and those things are amazing. Rainbow fish is really good. It's kind of like the difference between like bonita to tuna is bluefish to rainbow fish. Rain oh no, I'm thinking I'm thinking runners. Blue runners and rainbow runners. Uh, regardless, yes, I have had bluefish. Yeah, I know people say that kind of stuff. Like, personally, I don't like Jack Crevel. Um, I really don't like Jack C's. But I can handle, like, I can handle bluefish much better than I can handle uh, Jack Crevel. And really, Jack Crevel, I only don't like the real big ones. I'm thinking the smaller ones are probably okay. I just haven't tried one. I think the grain of the cut has a lot to do with scallops. You're abs yeah, it does. You want to get the grain going up and down so that you bite into the grain. That's one of the things that makes it real kind of scallopy. Um, if you don't, it's you like personally. Uh, we cooked some, and and Rachel kind of argues with me on this, but I thought the the stingray that I baked tasted a lot like uh, turkey, like dark meat turkey. I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm holding fast on that sentiment. I think that's what they tasted like. But you do, you cut it with the grain and pan fry it, and yeah, you're going to get it a lot closer to the uh, the presentation of scallops. Whiskey Woman 5, very much uh, want to thank you for coming by and saying hi. How are you today, ma'am? 
Absolute pleasure having you here. Battery's running low, got a bail. Hey, totally understand, man. You have a wonderful evening, and I will see you tomorrow, sir. Thank you very much for all that you do, man. I appreciate you. <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm a little sick today. I can't yell. I can't yell. <laughs> It'd just be way too loud. Ray on the grill is like a turkey brisket. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's exactly right. Oh, you're making me hungry for stingray. Dude, it's that time of year. They're out there. They're in the surf. Um, uh, I, I can't wait. We're going to be getting into them. And, of course, every time we go offshore from now on, like, that's going to be a target species. Is getting The problem is, is getting them damn big ones. You know what I mean? Like, you fish for them offshore, you're going to get yourself a 100-pounder. It's going to be a pain in the ass getting in the boat, getting the thing to die because they take forever to die because you can't fit them in the box, and then cutting them up offshore to fit them in the box and then filleting them down. It's, it's, it's a real labor of love. A lot of work goes into those guys, but good meat, and I like taking them. I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah, uh, you know, I haven't tried freshwater perch. I, I really want to, those yellow perch. When? Rachel says I have eaten it, and I'm just not remembering it. Oh, did they make it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so apparently I have had it. And uh, I'm going to have to try it again now, because I don't remember it, but I know that uh, all of your brother's cooking was fantastic, so I'm sure I very much enjoyed it. I do. I want to get into some perch, though. The perch that we have down here are really bony, like they taste good. But they're really bony, so you kind of have to, uh, like, you make a stew out of them. But they're good. Don't forget breaking your dad's grouper rod. Yeah, I hadn't forgot about that, man. And that hurt. And what? When did we break your rod? When did I break your rod? When? Oh, yeah, that's that's different. And yes, I have it sitting there. Next time I get to Corpus Christi and get to Roy's, I do plan on getting that fixed. That's that's a typical break, though. That's an easy thing. Like we got to fix a couple of those rods, and your rod needs all the all your guides replaced anyway. Yeah. Oh man, we broke a couple of uh, carbon fiber rods. Uh, that hurt. That hurt. Isn't gigging season closed? I saw some dudes gigging some flounder last weekend. I don't know. It's it's been a long time since I've been out there gigging. I want to say it is. Um, hold on one second. I got the book right here. Let's find out. That's a good question, sir. And I'm the right person to ask because I'm a YouTuber that makes me the authority. And I got the book, which makes me not always terribly wrong. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, jugging, oyster dredge, minnow traps, crab, hand fishing, trawl, seine, sail line, throw line, spear gun, spear, somewhere right here, trot lines, umbrella nets, where's gig? Gig. Maybe used to take non-game fish, yeah, 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 but what's the dates on it? And they make this stuff a little bit difficult to look up. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Flounder may be taken by pole and line no, in November. Okay, so gigging is from... Des it's in December, man. A two-fish limit on uh, gigging. Yeah, so it's only in December that you're allowed to gig. Uh, that's only for flounder, though. Stingray, I don't think they got a... Like, you can you can gig stingray all, all day long. As far as I know. Like, they don't even have it listed as a, as a baggable fish. It's not a... Uh, it's not one that they monitor. So you can catch them all day long. Nobody cares. And, dude, stingray is good eating. Man, you can get them out on the Pottery Island. Just at night, 
uh, early evening, like uh, eight. Well, okay, it gets dark about nine in the summertime, so like nine thirty, ten o'clock at night. Go out there with a, a lantern, a good lantern. You want it? It needs to be clear water, and you really want the surf to be low. But clear water, low surf, so that you can see the bottom. And you just go out there with your gig and a, and a lantern, and make sure you do the stingray shuffle with them toes in the sand, in case you walk up on one. But man, you'll see those eyes sticking out of there, and you just pin that guy. <laughs> it's fun. It's something I plan. We, we're going to do it this summer because it's been a long time since I've done it. Who cares whether it is closed or not? <laughs> Just get stainless steel guides. They don't break like the ceramic ones. I totally agree with you. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I got a couple of new rods here, and I got all stainless guides on mine, and I'm sold. I'm sold. Going to going to go stainless from now on. I like ceramic. I don't mind them, but I really like the stainless. Miss Charlene, Indiana Fishing. How are you doing, ma'am? It is an absolute pleasure to see you making videos again. Thank you very much for coming back. We missed you, ma'am. We're talking about spearing stuff. Ooh, speaking of spearing stuff, we're going to be doing some spear fishing this year. I tell you what, we are going to be getting into I can't wait. I tried. I wanted to go get some sheep's head off of uh, Packery Channel last weekend. Didn't make it happen. The water was just maybe a foot or two shy of being able to do that. I really wanted to, and then it kicked up, and it got muddy, and we just weren't able to do much after that. Early in the morning, it was close. But we're that time of year where we are going to be getting into, uh, we get a good weather window, we're spearing. I'm spearing, period. I, I, I'm looking for it. It's been a long time since we've had one of those days where we just totally fill the box with snapper and spade fish and all kinds of fun stuff. We're making that happen multiple times this year. I suspect ceramic is easier on your line, though. I don't know. I don't know because the uh, the stainless man there. That's that's really the route to go. A and J, sir, man. I appreciate everything you do. Had a lot of fun with you this weekend, man. You have a wonderful evening. Please tell your wife we said thank you for letting us borrow you, and I look forward to the next time. And thank you for joining us, man. You have a wonderful evening. So yeah, I don't know uh, personally. I don't know the difference between. Uh, like as far as the effect on your line between stainless and uh, ceramic, although I don't think they're whatever the difference is, I imagine it's negligible because it all comes down to the friction that uh, those guides will put on your line. I don't think either one of them is going to put much friction at all. The sheep said were sparse this year. Last year it took me and my friends thirty minutes to bag out. Yeah, I, I man, I, I hear you on that. Last year we were catching them in the surf. We were bagging out left and right. I hadn't caught any this year yet, um, and I haven't been down spear fishing for them. Uh, we have been fishing, you know, not as much as we need to be. We we just recently were able to get back into it, but yet I haven't caught any yet. So I've heard they're out there, but I haven't seen a lot of people catching them either. Actually, I have not seen anybody catch them. Need to invent Teflon hybrid guides. You know, you do something like that, you really do run the potential of uh, making a big thing just because you can make a trend out of it. Uh, but you are going to have to beat the competition. And they've already got a stranglehold on stainless and ceramic. Personally, I'm going to make, I'm going to invent PVC guides. And I'm going to sell them as a, a like a, a, a high-end deal. So that the so that the margin is there, the profit margin. <laughs> uh, excuse me, guys. I'm sorry, but I am still a little sick here. Uh, sorry. Excuse me. Get my vitamin C water going. All right. Uh, ready and back to it. I haven't seen anyone catch, and I have myself haven't caught any either. They. You know, maybe they're just, uh, well, the water's warm enough. They ought to be running. But, you know, to the same extent, I've seen people catching pompano in Florida and uh, Houston. So I know the pompano are running, but I didn't see any last weekend. And we had really good conditions to be able to see them. Nothing. I didn't see them. I know they're there. they got to be. If they're, if they're up in Houston and running, there's got to be pompano out there. I'm just not seeing them. Can't wait, though. Um... Yeah, you know what? To be fair, though, I haven't done much damage on the redfish this year either, though. I mean, the year is still young, but actually, well, we haven't had many fishing trips. So, to be fair, it's not really fair to hold that against me on that one. we got more coming. we got a lot of stuff planned here. Caught two big ones last weekend. Cool. How big? 
How big did you get them? Hey, Mom, how are you doing? We're only going to be on for a few more minutes, Mom. It's not going to be too much longer. We've been at it for a little over an hour, and I'm a little under the weather. And, you know, all those fun, you know, excuses for everything else that we always use for everything. But we're going to be hanging out for a few more minutes. And thank you very much for joining us, Mom. It is always a pleasure to have you with us. <laughs> Grant McIntosh. Grant McIntosh says, hi, Mom. <laughs> He's one of our boys over here. You need to be honored on that one because Grant is one of the epitomal YouTubers of all time. And I, I challenge anybody to disagree with me on that one. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> is Dad home yet? Did he... Uh, oh, man. Oh, so... <laughs> I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings or anything like that. But we did our collaboration with A&J Outdoors and Triple Tail TV last week. And we were out in... Uh, out on uh, Potter Island National Seashore, and we went to uh, 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 Packery Channel. While we were doing that, my dad went offshore, and he had spoken to me about going offshore with him, and I was like, man, I'm sorry, I can't. I got this thing that we're doing, a little YouTube event deal. So he's like, yeah, that's no problem, man. It's probably not going to be that good of a day. And then he went out there, and they bagged out on Snapper and got a swordfish, and then the very next day... Did did he get offshore the next day, Mom? I, I swear he said he bagged down on Snapper the second day. Is that right? Like, he just killed it. Two 16-inchers, dude. That's that's multiple dinners right there, man. Kudos on that. Good catch. I challenge I am best. Synox says I am best. I have one private video uploaded. Nobody wants to see videos of your privates. Beat that. <laughs> Nick, why aren't you doing videos, man? Why aren't you doing YouTube stuff? You got all the brains in the world. You know all this stuff to, that, all these cool things, all this DIY stuff, fixing them cars, everything you do. Why aren't you making videos on that? Trying to create a passive income. <laughs> He's not. I am being serious. I hold, I hold Grant, uh, man, Grant. I hold you with the same uh, respect that I hold for. Uh, uh, like the guys that I watch, like the YouTube channels that I enjoy watching, um, would be like Wang, Jarvis Johnson, Electro Boom, <laughs> Leon Lush, and I like, uh, uh, what's that guy's name? Oh, that long red haired dude. The professionals, you know what I mean? Like the big time channels. And I hold you with as much respect and regard as I hold those guys. Because I'm boring. <laughs> uh, I got nothing to say on that. <laughs> you're not boring, dude. It doesn't matter if you're boring. Just put pretty colors on the video. You're showing people how to do something. Yeah, vitamin C, Mom. I, I'm, I'm not feeling too hot right now. Uh, I just haven't had time to be sick this week. Cool dude, hey man. I was wondering if you ever litter. Um, probably by mistake. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie about that. Yeah, I'm big. Uh, I'm big on that. I don't like littering. I don't like stuff being thrown at the beach. I like to keep our beaches clean. You can expect to see me being a part of some beach cleanups and stuff like that. In fact, I have a beach cleanup video planned here in the very near future. But I'm not going to lie and say that I don't litter because I'm sure that from time to time a thing or two is blown out of my truck. Now, as far as trash goes, you know, we pack all that up into a five-gallon bucket with a lid on it. We don't leave trash laying around consciously. But I'm not going to say that, you know, something hasn't blown out of my truck from time to time. How's that for an answer? I don't know. Isn't Leon Lush a rancher on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, I just, I don't, I have weird tastes. Just period. Bar none, I do. Yeah, beaches are different. What about in a parking lot? I, I kind of feel the same because I, exact same mentality on that. Because if it's if it happens in a parking lot, it's going to end up on the beach in the ocean or something. So you know, same sentiment. I've got a lot of crap in my truck. I'm not going to say something doesn't blow out from time to time. I do try to keep the trash, you know, like in the cab. 
and it might trash out my cab, but I want to keep it out of the parking lot and out of the water and the beaches. So, um, uh, yes, I consciously, uh, consciously make an effort to try to keep my trash packed away. I don't even like having trash, to be honest with you. I don't like, uh, I'm a, I don't like all these plastic bag, don't even get me started on this. Plastic bags, I hate them. I loathe plastic bags. They are the end of the world. I wish all stores would shut it down on plastic bags. All this plastic wrapping and crap that goes around every single product that you buy in your life. You can't buy a piece of candy without it being wrapped in two different kinds of plastic. Totally against all that stuff. So I don't like trash in general. Like just today I went shopping and I used reusable bags. I hate plastic bags. Um, but I'm not going to lie and say that nothing has ever blown out of my truck before. I do try to keep a hold of my trash. I make a point to do that. I'm not going to say I'm 100% successful at it, but I do try. We have an insane amount of trash after we have a beach trip. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? We, we pack it. We pack a, uh, an ice chest with stuff. They got plastic bags now that degrade in water. I don't, man, that's not good enough. Not good enough. Plastic bags, period, need to go. Use reusable bags. They have thermal-lined ones that'll keep your stuff cool. I think it needs to be, like, I am against people making laws for the th the ways that we're supposed to live, like laws about the requirement to wear a seatbelt. Yeah, kids should, should be required to wear seatbelts. You should be held accountable as an parent to make sure that your kids are wearing a seatbelt. No, I don't think I should be required by law to wear a seatbelt. I don't think I should be able to be pulled over and written a citation for not wearing a seatbelt. I'm an idiot for not doing it. I'm a stupid individual, but I don't believe that deserves a citation. That having been said, despite my beliefs on making laws, I think there should be laws against plastic bags. I think there should be laws against people using all of this packaging on all of these products that are being made. It is extremely wasteful. I totally agree with the plastic crap. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Animated, dude. This is a subject that gets me hot. I hate plastic bags. I hate all this wrapping. Man, go to go to go to McDonald's. Go to McDonald's and order yourself a meal. Get yourself a burger. Get yourself a thing of fries and a drink. Weigh it, weigh it, and then eat it. And weigh it after you're done. And tell me how much of that, what percentage of what you just ordered is trash, by sheer weight, by sheer volume and mass. Tell me how much of your order is trash for something that is simply handed to you across a counter. That's ridiculous. That's my two cents. Animated. I'm hot about this one. Second day, loaded up on Snapper. Yeah, good for him. Whatever. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> hey, Dad. <laughs> Congratulations on your amazing pair of fishing trips, Dad. Good job, Dad. We got a bunch of whiting. And I enjoyed every minute of it, so I'm not going to cry about it. Savannah had a blast. That was the most important thing. And we got to hang out with some really cool, got to meet some really cool people. So I'm not, like, mad about anything, but I'm envious of that swordfish and all them snapper. Remember that spring break where my entire bed with a camper had almost nothing but trash? Yeah, I remember that, and we slept in it. <laughs> One of those. I don't remember if it was that time, but we've slept in it before. McDonald's uses sandwich bags on the freaking napkins now. Exactly right. It's detrimental to society to have all of this, not only for the amount of trash, but also for the amount of things that are so septic now. Things are so clean that we are not accustomed to the bacteria uh, that we are that we come across because we are so like our bodies are so trained against it nowadays. Hence. All of the antibiotics that are being prescribed. I am one of those conspiracy theory guys, I suppose, in that regard. But yeah, I, I think that we are hurting ourselves in many different areas with all of this plastic and trash and crap. There was a video a while ago where people tried to go to fast food places and not have any trash. It was cool. I love that kind of stuff, man. Uh, I, I, I gotta say that... Uh, uh, like city officials better hope I never run for or, or win a significant office because that is what I'm gunning for. Styrofoam, I'm gunning for it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. Styrofoam, get rid of it. Ban it. Ban it. Ban plastic. Plastic bags, all of that stuff, man. 
Pete, but I'm here. <laughs> That's some South Texas talk right there. Pete, but I'm here. Yeah, no, nah, it's all good, Will. I hear you, man. Uh, I appreciate you coming and hanging out, dude. We're probably going to be on here for just a few more minutes, and I'm going to be getting off. I'm, I'm kind of sick and under the weather, but I was excited about getting on to another live stream, so we jumped. Sorry about that, guys. Can you see me? Something happened here. I don't know what. I lost my stream for a second there. It's YouTube telling me, dude, nobody cares anymore. Get off. We're done with your live stream. <laughs> Styrofoam float. I don't care if it floats. It's still trash. I don't. Uh, it doesn't matter if it floats or sinks. It's trash. It's trash that ends up in our oceans and rivers. And, and uh, fish eat it. You find plastic all over their stomachs, dude. The continent of trash. The uh, what is that dead zone outside of Louisiana called? These are massive, massive areas of our oceans that are completely destroyed as a result of some very poor decisions we are making as a species. No, no, no. I'm not saying styrofoam in general. Yes, there are some uses for styrofoam closed cell. Uh, but, I mean, all of these ice chests, all of these, what is that called? Those goods that are disposable, st disposable goods. It's crap. It's crap, man. You don't need all these styrofoam ice chests. You want to get an ice chest? Go, go get a real ice chest. Or better yet, Go to Walmart, and for $5, you can get an insulated bag and use the bag. What's the difference between that and the ice chest? It's not rigid. Does it make that much of a difference? The, the ice chest gets it will end up in the ocean. A tuna is going to eat a piece of that ice chest at some point. It's going to end up in his stomach. He's going to digest it, and that's going to be a part of his meat. And that's a fish that you are either going to eat or you're going to be unable to eat. Louisiana Delta is debatable. Evidence shows it has been going on forever. And yeah, it has because we've been using pesticides that end up in the Mississippi River forever. Don't know if this is true, but supposedly there's a floating mass of trash the size of Texas in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. That's called the continent of trash. It's absolutely true. There's a whole lot of stuff on that, and it's a lot bigger than Texas. A lot bigger than Texas. It stretches the entire width of the Pacific Ocean. It's a big, curling mass thing. It's a lot of trash, and it's deep. It's like an iceberg. That thing, you know, it doesn't look like a landmass, but it covers the entire Pacific Ocean from Japan to California. I mean, it was before man was there. Yeah, there was probably there there was probably a bit of a dead zone there because you have all of that fresh water coming from the Mississippi into the Gulf of Mexico, but that dead zone is growing. It's growing, and it's growing as a result of all of the pesticides. Whether or not it was there, I don't know. It might have been. But it's growing at substantial rates, absolutely as a result of all the pesticides that are coming out of the Mississippi River. What are your thoughts on that? Styrofoam, yes or no? You... What? <laughs> yeah, you're being silly. <laughs> yes. I've seen it flying. A hey, check that out. Look at that. NJ, Where is that? Right, right there. <laughs> the first person above it. Why were you not subscribed to before, A&J? <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> what? Has he been holding out this entire time? That turd? <laughs> so, yeah, I got cool little pop-ups and stuff like that now whenever people do things on the channel. It's not the pesticides, it's all the nitrogen. Yeah, the nitrogen is a result of the pesticides. Um, and not just pesticides, that pesticides is a very generic term. But all, all, all the chemicals wash off and everything like that that happens up into the Mississippi River, all of that stuff off of all those fields, they wash into the, uh, the Mississippi, it all bleeds out there, and all of those things cause, uh, uh, they cause the, the plankton to overgrow. The pl plankton overgrowing causes there to be a lack of oxygen in the water for the fish down there so the fish can't survive. Meant, like here, meant to be Luke here. Yeah, we do need Luke in on this conversation. He knows a little bit more about it. Uh, man, I don't even want to see that, uh, Will. I wouldn't even want to see it. <laughs> yeah, John, I'm kind of curious. I'd kind of like to see that too. What's up, STP? How are you doing there, man? P pleasure having you here with us tonight, man. We're talking about... Uh, 
uh, pesticides and uh, what else? We were talking about, uh, like, I don't like plastic bags. I have a big thing against plastic bags and plastic packaging, ruining our oceans. And uh, so I've been kind of ranting about that a little bit. And we're talking about the continent of trash in the Pacific Ocean and the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico outside of the Louisiana River Delta. Pesticides is the start of the chain, which results in isogen. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, my sentiments, same thing on that one. For some reason, none of my subscriptions are on the TV, so I have to resubscribe. Well, that's cool, man. I appreciate you doing that. It gave me an opportunity to check out the little thing that pops up over here. But it didn't. Actually, thinking about it, that did not make the sound it was supposed to. It was supposed to be a bell. I'm going to have to double check that now. Although, man, I tell you what, guys. Oh, so, you know, we hit the 1,000 subscriber mark. And I got my watch time and everything. Thank you again, everybody, for that. So I'm trying to get the monetization thing going. And, dude, that is rough. The AdSense, I didn't know that, like, Grant... Actually, Grant, I'm sorry, man. I'm going to pull you aside. Uh, I'm not going to do it to you now, but I'm going to have a little chat with you about that. I'm curious um, because I'm having a really rough go of setting up that uh, the AdSense thing. You know, I'm doing it all with my phone, which is probably just... I want... It's another one of those things where I want to be able to say I did all this with my phone. It's stupid, I know, but I like being able to say that. And now setting up this Google AdSense thing sucks. Sucks, man. I was under the impression that the nitrogen was chiefly from literally fecal matter. Um... I don't know. I don't I don't think that's the case, but I don't know. I'm sure that plays into it. I'm sure that plays into it, but I just don't know. I don't know that much about the uh, studies on fecal matter. I see all that trash in the Gulf. I'm on Padre. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, Padre's bad. And, you know, we go to Cozumel and those beaches are just, all those beaches are just littered. Littered with stuff. Go to Big Shell. Like, we clean our beaches here, so you don't really see the effect of it. But, man, you go down to, like, Big Shell, when Big Shell exists, and you'll see it. <laughs> Stuff is piled up down there. What the heck? This thing is just goofy dealing with. Nope, don't do that. That's a lot of poop. Yep. On a light note, in filming, my first bikini <laughs> <laughs> I very much look forward to seeing that, my friend. I've seen that game before, and you got the bod for it. <laughs> the hurricanes always suck up trash and spread it across the Gulf. Yeah, man, you want to have some. You want to have some fun after a hurricane or a good tropical storm or something. Go and check out St. Joe's Island. Go combing over there, man. You find all kinds of fun stuff. Big Shell, go down to Big Shell, Port Mansfield. Find all kinds of fun stuff treasure trove if you know your treasure is pieces of people's houses and boats you don't know enough about studies on fecal matter you are a case study on fecal matter yeah but I don't study myself I ain't that smart I'm all gut no butt <laughs> same here uh, same we were, we were talking about that a little while ago we were all talking about the things that we have done to hide our guts on camera Found a bundle of weed on the beach once. I found syringes out there. Uh, Mustang Island State Park used to have a headhunter fee on syringes. They would pay you a couple of bucks for uh, every syringe that you found back in the day. Back when I was like a kid, like five years old. Though I never collected on it. I was five years old. But I remember finding a few when I was younger. And my dad told me, oh, hold on to those. Like, we're going to put them in the tackle box. Hold on to them. They'll pay you for them. I don't think they do that anymore, though. Rockport equals dope destination number one with the with the bikini. Is that where you're going first is Rockport? You need to save that for spring break, dude. That needs to be a spring break video. Speaking of which, Rachel will not let me do this, but I wanted to do a spring break fishing video. Head out there on the most packed piece of beach you can find and go shark fishing with all them people in the water. Yeah, we found a few syringes. Oh, the syringes everywhere in Rockport. I hear you. Dude, you want to find syringes? Go to North Beach. You find all kinds of crap on the beach at North Beach. 
Beach over by the Lexington. Chew, that is a rough stretch of. It's not even a real beach, but you know, it's 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 rough. All kinds of crap on that thing. At least they cleaned the one outside of uh, Holiday Inn Emerald. I don't think they cleaned the beach over by North Beach. Or if they do, they don't clean it very well. That place is nasty. Yeah, it's gross. It's a gross stretch of beach, man. Like, it, it's pretty from afar, you know? Like, if you look at it from afar, it's like you got them hotels and it's a beach. And on the right day, the water can be pretty. You have the Corpus Christi skyline in the background and the Lexington and the Harbor Bridge. It's, it's scenic looking. But man, you walk on there and you feel like you're getting syphilis. You know where that mermaid gift store is on the other side of the JFK? I'm on the canal and it's full of crap. Lots of fish where I live. Like three-eyed guy. <laughs> um, mermaid. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I apologize for that joke, STP. I was thinking you were talking about over by Portland. You're talking about over by... Uh, on the JFK. Sorry, sorry. I was thinking the other causeway in Corpus to Portland. Yeah, I fish those canals sometimes. Dude, I'm envious. That spot is rad. I'd love to look. We've looked at houses over there. Love it. Homeless guy is fighting for real estate on the jetties off the Lexington Dangerous Place in general. I've been walking around on that beach before, and I've seen people just taking a dump just right on the beach. Don't care. What is that on my screen right there? Did I sneeze on it? I'm sorry. I'm so gross. I'm just that sick guy. Sorry. North Beach is nice now where Fajitaville is. All that imported Cali sand. The sand ain't bad. It's just everything else sucks. Used to buy alcohol illegally at this one liquor store on North Beach. <laughs> We've all got them kinds of stories. Um, I think that's the very first, uh, the very first time I ever had uh, Mad Dog MD 2020s was on North Beach and Vermouth. Oh man, dude, I remember like we had this apartment in Corpus Christi. And uh, I was like 21 years old. This is where like me and, and Triple Tail TV and Synox and all of our buds, this is where we all used to hang out. And we'd go down like uh, to that whole seawall down Corpus Christi and hang out and skateboard and stuff like that at night. And uh, man, we were poor, so we didn't have a whole lot of money for alcohol. So there was this one night where all I had was like just enough money to get a bottle of vermouth. It was the cheapest thing we could physically get our hands on alcohol-wise with a good alcohol content. So we were cruising around Corpus Christi Bay, skateboarding, chugging back a bottle of vermouth. 2020 makes you see better. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't make you see worse. It takes the 2020 from you is what it does. <laughs> oh, that was good times, guys. Like, I would never go back to that, but that was good. That was good times. Oh, MD2020. Yeah, yeah, autocorrect. I hear that. You might as well be doing text to uh, talk to text. <laughs> four locos are 14% and three bucks. Yeah, we didn't have them back then. We didn't have four locos. Four locos happened uh, about five years after we lived in Corpus on the Bayfront over there. <coughs> I remember I, after, after that, after that Corpus stint, I moved to Austin. And when I lived in Austin, that's when they came out with Sparks. The, the energy drink alcoholic beverages and dude we went to town on those things in Austin Sparks used to live off of those things did the Four Locos but Sparks was the drink of choice and then they banned that whole thing which I disagree with again back to ranting about something I don't think the government should be controlling things they allow monsters and they allow alcoholic beverages who cares if somebody has the the, the smarts and the business savvy to put the two together and provide it in a single beverage container for me, I'm totally cool with it. There doesn't need to be a law against it. Put a warning on the thing if there's an actual issue, which I don't believe there is, but then let it be. We don't need to be shutting down these companies because they are providing us with two of these other things that we can already get on our own in the same store and combine them ourselves. Bleh. Bleh. Mickey's and Hurricanes, yeah. Oh, man, the Holy Hand Grenades. <laughs> oh, I'll never forget those guys. I'll never remember the nights of those guys. Nothing like having a heart attack while running over a group of people on the sidewalk. Man, yeah. You're a juiced-up drunk. 
They write, the Lexington area sucks. There's an amazing bar and restaurant called Brewster Street Ice House by the Lexington. <laughs> yeah, uh, STP. I uh, I used to work for uh, Casey Lane and Brad Lomax. Uh, I used to work at uh, House of Rock, did concerts over there, and we did concerts at Brewster's and Concrete Street and uh, Executive Surf Club. So, yeah, very. I'm well-versed in Brewster's. You got good taste there, man. That place is red. It was causing health issues, as I understand, allegedly. That's the key right there. Some very young people were, that like parties, like house parties, 21-year-olds, were, were slamming Four Locos and hitting them hard. They were getting drunk and alcohol poisoning off of them. And uh, it, it was like two or three circumstances of, of that happening. And they, they were having issues, like heart issues, when they were getting alcohol poisoning. That is the, the extreme example of the stories that caused them to get rid of those things. What is up, Musky Hans? Okay, so here's the deal with the jellyfish. I will be eating one. Went out fishing this weekend. I didn't find any. I, I didn't have the foresight to get this video of... of, to, of I kind of wanted to live stream it. and I might not live stream it just because it's going to be difficult to get a jellyfish, get the uh, get a live stream going out on the beach to eat a jellyfish. So I'm probably going to do a video. I didn't have the foresight to do a video before I hit 1,000 subscribers, and I hit it just a little bit faster than I thought I would. I wasn't expecting that. So that that's priority number one. One with a bullet, man. I'm getting out there. Every time we get out there, I'm finding a jellyfish. As soon as that happens, I'm making that video. If I can live stream it, I'm going to do it. But that's the plan right now. Is I we just didn't find any jellyfish this last time we were out there. I gotta find them. We're gonna make it happen. Uh, it's right now. It's I'm, I'm under pressure. I'm under fire. We are on a deadline to find those jellyfish and make this thing happen. We're gonna do it. It's just about finding them now. <laughs> Cigarettes and alcohol is way worse than alcohol with caffeine. Um, there's all kinds of stuff out there that's way worse. That's readily available here. Um, you know, well, I mean, we, we make lots of trips to Mexico for the things that we're not allowed to get here, but uh, I do totally, I, I, I don't know if, well, cigarettes are bad, period. I can't argue with that. I'm not going to lie. I am a smoker. I do a vape pen. I don't like doing it on camera. Um, I, I managed to get off of cigarettes with a vape pen, and I don't know that the vape pen is better, but at least I don't get the cigarette stuff. And the combination of cigarettes and alcohol, better than it being worse than alcohol and caffeine. I can't disagree with that. Seven Dust played at Brewster's recently. Wow, that's... Man, I'd have thought they were more of a concrete band. That's rad. Oh, man. See, I miss Corpus. I miss being able to go to shows like that. Just do both. Uh, preaching to the choir, bro. I totally agree. Just do both. I'll watch. I promise, Musky Hans, I'm going to make it worth everybody's while. I promise you that. It's going to take me just a little bit of time to make it happen, but I'm going to make it good. I plan on I plan on trying to make that video go viral. Just go to King High School. We call that place a pharmacy because you can get anything there at King High School. What's another good one for that sort of inappropriate behavior? Oh, I can't think anymore. I spent, uh, I spent a little bit of time at Del Mar and when we were... Yeah, anything around Del Mar. There you go. King High School. I don't disagree with you, though, with that part of town. Using nicotine patches and working my way up. Hey, dude, good luck. Good luck. Kudos. I support you on that one, man. That That is rough, getting off of uh, cigarettes. Because of good luck, man. Seven Dust went on stage and literally bitched about the venue. That sucks. That's not even that bad. Like, it's a nice little venue. That's That sucks. I don't know how they were treated or not. And that doesn't say like I don't know that uh yeah I don't know that Casey was doing that show. Do you know was Casey doing that show? Or was it a uh was uh, uh Brewster's putting on the show themselves? How is Casey, man? I hadn't seen that dude in a long time. Yeah, I have a hard time like trying to complain about Seven Dust, but uh you know, get up on stage and do your job. But I don't know. They might have been treated poorly behind the scenes or something. I've seen that one happen before. No idea. Not a fan of Brewsters. <clears throat> you been you been to a House of Rock lately? How are those guys doing? I hadn't seen any of them in a long time. I know you're not too fond of them anymore. Yes, 
need to uh, I, hey Nick I, I tell you what I've been challenged to do a video uh, I'll utilize you on this if you're interested and up for it uh, to, I gotta make it happen pretty quick here but I got challenged to do a video where I do a, a like catch a fish cook it up and serve it to a homeless veteran and it's gonna be one of those ones where I'm thinking like I'm probably gonna end up going to downtown Corpus Christi at night after a fishing trip to go feed some guy uh, so if you want in on that, man, you want to give some help or will, if you want in on that, let me know. We'll, uh, I got to make, that was that saltwater hook deal and I'm under the, I'm under the gun to get that video done too. Last time I went to Brewster's, me and a bunch of cow pokes had some words and more. I think I've had that experience with you guys, of course, at many of them, but at just about every bar in town been kicked out we had one night where we got kicked out of three bars what was it, it was uh, we got kicked out of uh got kicked out of uh that one over by the bus station the blues bar dr rockets and then we got kicked out of somewhere else and then we got kicked out of the texan later that night i hadn't been kicked out of brewster's i've had my friends take me out of house of rock before more homeless in Aransas Pass. Kind of blows now, man. Bunch of... Uh, bar. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that one, too. Bunch of cheers behind the bar. <laughs> uh, oh, what was that? Uh, what was that bar down by Surf Club that uh, Woody's or whatever that was got kicked out of that place with... Uh, what was that dude's name? Will... Not Will. Wade. Wade. Wade got us kicked out. He'd been kicked out of there like multiple times. I don't even know how they even let him in the door anymore. Oh, and we got kicked out of that hippie joint that time. That was fun. Anyway, so we uh, we are digressing into conversations about kicking out of bar, getting kicked out of bars and venues. Probably not the most appropriate conversation for a uh, a family fishing channel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Nick. So uh, uh, Will Ledbetter, that's Triple Tail TV. He's doing a uh, he's doing a YouTube channel as well, and he's killing it, man. He's worth watching, dude. Check him out. Dude knows his stuff. He's in your area. You need to uh, you need to be hounding him about uh, doing some fishing. Hey right, guys, I tell you what. On that note, my, my apologies. I am uh, under the weather here, and I feel like hitting the sack. I'm ready for uh, I'm ready for a good night's sleep tonight. I want to thank you guys very much, man. Uh, we hit a thousand subscribers, and we did it in less than a year. I want to thank you very much for that. Every single one of you individually, um, thank you. Really, really appreciate that. We hit thirty-five thousand views. Uh, that's an even bigger milestone than a thousand subscribers. Thank you, guys. This uh, means the world. It has been an amazing one-year anniversary. Bubble. Pleasant. Oh, you're coming in at the wrong time. We're shutting things down, but thank you very much for joining us. Uh, guys, thank you. We have had a fantastic time on this journey of this last year. We have learned a lot. We've had a lot of fun. We've been a lot of fun places, and we've done things that we would not have otherwise done had we not had the incentive of doing it on YouTube. So I want to thank you guys very much for that. Bubbles Pleasant, I do apologize for shutting this thing down on you like that. I want to thank you very much for joining us, though. And I do look forward to being able to hang out and chat with you. Uh, we've been at it for like an hour and a half, and I'm, I'm sick. So I, I'm like, I'm losing my voice, and I'm out of my vitamin C water that I've been drinking here. <laughs> Who else is doing a live stream? Anybody got one going on? Will, you doing one? You interested, man? You got people want to chat here, dude. Hit them up. Thank you very much, Bubbles Pleasant. John Klopp, all of you guys, I really, really appreciate you all. I'm looking forward to year number two here on this channel. You got all kinds of fun stuff. I got a huge backlog of videos that need to happen. Stay tuned. I'm going to be, I'm gonna be gunning for that jellyfish. We are eating a jellyfish. Um, every trip we go out there, that is priority number one. We're getting that jellyfish. We're making this video. If I can live stream it, I will. Keep an eye out for us, guys. Thank you very much. You have a wonderful night. Get outside. Go have a good time. Go get it on video. Go do what you do. You guys have a wonderful night, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.
and I forgot I got a thing here so you guys can uh, check out I got one thing I'm gonna play with here before I let you go you're welcome to hang out with me for just a second if you want I'm playing with a feature on this this is like a behind the scenes like after stream little fun thing if you guys are interested in checking that out if not I totally understand but I'm really curious about this feature that this thing allows me to do and I just don't know how to do it so how do I let's do that guy yes 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 and what do I do do I do this nope not yet Nick I'm still on here man I'm, you're calling me and I'm still on here it's gonna be just a moment Okay, so that, I got to downsize that. Yes, I want this. How do I make this thing pop up? So, like, all of our mods and stuff like that, I got all new mods on here. I updated that. And I'm trying to make it... Okay, showing on stream, okay that guy why isn't he he's showing that did show okay so this guy showing on that was supposed to be showing this entire time and it didn't show is it showing now nope it ain't none of it is I've got lower thirds I've got things why aren't they showing up what do I got to do to make this stuff happen Edit stream info. That ain't it. You're getting the uh, raw deal here behind the scenes, old Stanley. Will that do it? I'm just playing with stuff here. So I've got this really cool little deal where like end credits are supposed to roll. And. Like any time, like, you know, how that little subscriber thing happened down there. That stuff is supposed to pop up, and I don't know how I'm supposed to get this to come play. Create a new giveaway and get, oh, no, 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 don't do that. No giveaways. No giveaways. No, we ain't doing that. <laughs> credits. Yes, roll credits. Roll credits button only works when you, I am live. So roll them, roll them, man. Credits. Why ain't it gonna roll? Well, boo. Bell hell. Oh, we got the little chat thing right there. Wait, Dad, what are you doing? Hey, what's up, Fishing Family Network? We guy, uh, we we, <laughs> you made it. So I I ended the stream. But now I'm playing with Streamlabs, and I'm just kind of messing with the settings here. This is all like the, like the credits are supposed to be rolling and everything. I can't figure out how to get this thing to work, so I'm just kind of playing with stuff. <laughs> the stream is over. You're catching the behind-the-scenes me just dinking around with stuff right now. But hey, man, I appreciate you dropping by and saying hi, dude. I love what you guys do. Sorry, I've missed uh, your last couple of streams recently just because of some... Uh, the, the, your, your your stream schedule and my uh, work schedule didn't line up, but I promise you, you will be seeing a lot more of me. Oh yeah, no, I know you do. I love that you guys have a consistent schedule, man. It makes it easier for me to remember to uh, get over there and check you guys out. I love y'all's channel, man. You guys do it right. Your whole and and not only do you do it right, like you do it real professionally and stuff like that, but you guys all have like this awesome personality. Makes it real, uh, real easy to watch. Real fun to watch. Um, so I've got like end credits and stuff that I want to roll at the end of the stream, and I can't figure out how to get them to roll. No, man. Thank you. I appreciate what you do, man. I appreciate the. Uh, I pr appreciate what you guys provide. It. 
Yes, okay, so that, no, that was it. Why isn't it doing it? Apparently, it's been rolling credits this entire time. And I know there are credits on there. It's supposed to be rolling our mods. And I got I updated my whole list of mods and stuff. Does your technician deal with the uh, Streamlabs OBS, particularly the mobile version? Do everything with the cell phone. I don't even know how to do this stuff on the computer these days. I mean, I say that I could probably get it. Why isn't that showing? Hidden on pre. Oh, maybe that'll do it. Let's see. Is that going to roll them? Nope, that didn't do it. Hmm. Maybe if I did the live thing now. Which I don't remember how to do. Yeah, dude, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, are you familiar with D and Nick Nimmin? Uh, I hang out with those dudes occasionally. I hang out with them. I, I hit them up. I DM them. Um, I get a lot of answers from them, but they're also like super busy, so it's kind of hard to get anything out of them sometimes. Don't do that. Don't do that. I want this. Thank you. Thank you for the heads up on that. I'll take any advice I can get. Like, I'm not just a putz. I watch the videos on it and stuff, but I'm still just not, you know, until you actually like sit there and do it and kind of get the, the repetition, the muscle memory and all that stuff, it's kind of, kind of hard to remember. Especially when you're in the moment and you're sitting here like with people literally watching you just dink your way through a bunch of settings on your phone. It makes it a little bit more difficult to try to get something accomplished. There it is. Okay, so there's that guy. Roll him. Only works when I'm live, but I am live. So why isn't it showing them? So maybe I need to do it from the actual... That means I would have to set it up on a separate tablet to be able to mess with it. If I have to go to the website and get it to play. That sucks. Hmm. That sucks. But I can do that. Kind of brainstorming here. Who? Well, man, I tell you what. Uh, I really, really appreciate you guys. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm sick. <laughs> So, and I've been sick for like the last three days and I have not been able to take like a minute off from work. Uh, so, I'm finally going to go and enjoy an evening with my wife, my wife and daughter. I'm going to uh, get myself another full glass of vitamin C water here and I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> for those of you guys that hung around to watch this, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm sorry for uh, making you suffer through me tinkering with this app but appreciate you guys you'll have a wonderful evening and i'll catch y'all in the next one and because everybody's already kind of left and i'm just going to turn this thing off like that